Good evening. The doors of St. Alfred Parish are open wide to welcome each and every one, with a special acknowledgement to all who are visiting our parish community. During this prayerful time together, may we encounter Jesus and experience the joy of his presence. Offertory envelopes for the year 2025 are now available. They are arranged in alphabetical order at the side of the church, if you have not been an envelope user and would like to be one, you can call or come to the church office Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Please note that some parishioners have been assigned new envelope numbers, so it's particularly important that you do not use your old envelopes in the new year. Ministers of the Eucharist are needed for the liturg 
liturgical celebrations during the Christmas season. Please see the sign-up sheets in the minister's room. Please choose a date and time before December 22nd. Thank you. There will only be one collection today. Please place your donation for the special collection for Lebanon along with your regular Sunday offering. The envelopes for Lebanon were attached to last week's bulletin. If you did not receive one, there are special contribution envelopes at the entrance of the church. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. God's word is a message of hope, and it has long been proclaimed in difficult times of exile, imprisonment, and political turmoil. For those of us weary of dark news, the message may be a monetary relief on this Sunday, but do we believe it? What will it take for this word to settle deep in our hearts and even motivate us to take hopeful action on behalf of those for whom hope is meaningless? If not us, then who? Before we begin our celebration of this Mass, we'd like everyone to warmly greet those around them. Our celebrant today is Monsignor Hugh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, on the second Sunday of Advent, our attention is turned to the great figure of John the Baptist. John calls us out to the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He cries out, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first of all pause and call to mind our sins.
Almighty God, mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. As we light two candles, let us, let us prepare ourselves through prayer, opening a way for the Lord to come into our lives. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look towards the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream Then was her mouth filled with laughter On her lips there were songs The Lord has done 
done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The heathens themselves said, What marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage. As streams in dry land, those who were sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel for the, from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, Lord Jesus, alleluia. Come, Lord Jesus, come and be born in our hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, 
during the high priest of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all of the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Listen again to the opening verses of this evening's Gospel. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. John had what is called, both actually and symbolically, the desert experience. Think for a moment of the people you know who've had the desert experience. There was Moses, Moses the wanderer, Moses the refugee. Where did he meet God? In the desert. The Israelites after him, disobedient and hard-hearted, wandered in the desert for 40 years to learn submission to the will of God. David fled for his life from his own son Absalom, hiding in the desert. When Jesus began his mission, St. Luke says that the Spirit led him to the desert. When Saul was knocked off his horse on the way to Damascus, before he would become St. Paul, he spent three years in the Arabian desert. John the Baptist lives in, in the desert so he can announce the Messiah to prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Hundreds of thousands of hermits and monks have found holiness and wisdom in the desert. The question why the desert? Because the desert is so basic, an unforgiving place. You are as close to the edge of life and death as you could possibly be. No excess, no luxury, no illusions in the desert, just total, vast, harsh emptiness. You live in total dependency from hand to mouth, from day to day. There are no distractions, no TV sets, no cell phones, no computers, no internet, no car, no nothing. Everything becomes intensely focused on the bare facts of existence, of yourself and your God. There is just you your utter, complete self in the vast emptiness of the desert. And the challenge the desert offers is this. What will you find there? Will you find God? If not here, then nowhere else. It was in this experience of utter desolation and dependency that Moses discovered God as did Jesus and a whole army of holy people who lived life on the edge where grace and humanity meet. Is it any wonder that John the Baptist gave testimony to Jesus in the desert? 
Many of you may remember a man named Terry Anderson. He was one of the people held hostage between 1985 and 1991 by Shiite Hezbollah militants in the desert of the Middle East. Against his will, Terry played John's role. For Terry Anderson gave testimony, very moving testimony. Terry was a fallen away Catholic, but what happened to him? He says he became a better person during those terrible years that the terrorists stole from him. And when he says better, he doesn't mean better in the sense of have a nice day, but rather better in the sense that it means he grew deeper. He lived, experienced the edge of existence in the desert. And like all of the mystics before him, he knew he could never, never be the same again. He mentioned that one of the helps that got a lot of service was the Bible. And so, like John the Baptist, the word literally came to Terry Anderson in the desert. And what words stand out? Three are prominent. The first word is faith, as it always is when one embarks on the desert experience. He was stripped of everything and found it very, very painful. But as he said, my faith kept me from going into despair. The second word is repentance. He says, I haven't been a good Catholic. I must turn to God more deeply. The third word is forgiveness. He said, I don't hate anybody. I'm a Christian and I'm a Catholic and it's really required of me that I forgive and I intend to do just that. Imagine being able to say that after being held hostage for six years. The word of God came to Terry Anderson in the desert and those words were faith, repentance, and forgiveness. Words of power, words not likely to be spoken unless he had that desert experience. For you and for me, who have not literally been to the desert, the desert experience is an absolute requirement for holiness and growth. There's no other way. And what is this desert experience for us? Firstly, it means learning to do with less. All the things the advertisers convince us that we need to be fulfilled as people are lies. And we know it. More clutters the spirit, less frees the spirit. Advent is the time to learn to do with less so that we may become more. We have a better chance of meeting God when we have fewer distractions. Think of that during these days of rampant consumerism between now and Christmas. Secondly, the desert experience means solitude. It means prayer. It means stepping out of the fast track with its endless distractions and giving time in prayer to the God who loves you. Then, like John and Terry Anderson, we might just hear the word of God. Do you make time for solitude? Then you might hear God speak to you in the silence of your heart. Third, the season of Advent is also a personal challenge, a call to repentance. Christ came into our world not just as our brother, but as our Savior as well. He came 
for a redemptive purpose on a mission to rescue each one of us. He came to draw us into union with himself, to coax from us a personal response and to save us from our sins. According to St. Matthew's Gospel, the angel of the Lord said to St. Joseph, she will give birth to a son and you must name him Jesus because he is the one who will save his people from their sins. Because we are sinners, doesn't that mean we should avail ourselves of the sacrament of reconciliation during this holy season of Advent? This is a good time of year to open our hearts in all of our vulnerability to our loving Savior, to be openly welcoming to other people and yet seal our sinfulness in is not the best preparation for our Savior's coming at Christmas. Years ago, there was a Broadway play about a young person who dropped out of school, rejected his family, and became hooked on drugs. In a moving scene in the play, the young person looks up to heaven and cries out in a tortured voice, Oh God, how I wish you had made life like a notebook so that I could tear out the pages on which I made mistakes and throw them away forever. Thanks to Jesus Christ, our life is like a notebook. We can tear out the pages on which we committed sins and discard them forever. In his love, Jesus gave us the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation. Through it, we can literally tear out those parts of our life that are not, we are not proud of and throw them away forever. And remember, God forgives, God forgets. As a result, the sacrament of reconciliation is the perfect way to prepare us for the liturgical celebration of Christ's first coming into the world. It is this marvelous gift that Advent holds out to each one of us. It is a great grace-filled gift that Jesus wishes to give each of us to prepare us for the blessed days that lie ahead. Advent is an invitation to set things right with God and to prepare ourselves not only to celebrate the first coming of Jesus, but also to celebrate the second coming of Christ. Let us rejoice and thank our Lord for giving us a way to erase the past and to start all over again. Let me close by paraphrasing a beautiful prayer that was written 1,600 years ago by an early Christian father named Origen. Jesus, my feet are dusty and dirty. Pour water into your basin and come wash my feet as you washed the feet of the apostles at the Last Supper. I realize that I am terribly bold in asking you to do this, but I fear the warning that you gave Peter when you said to him, if I do not wash your feet, you cannot have companionship with me. Wash my feet then, Jesus, because I do want your companionship more than anything else in the world. Let us stand and together recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Let us pray now as hopeful people in a world in need of hope. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that we may be an unambig unambiguous source of hope in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost hope because of poverty, injustice, or violence, and for the will to offer hope supported by workable solutions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who endeavor to provide hope to others, family members and friends, neighbors and co-workers, teachers and counselors, therapists and spiritual guides, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who diminish hope to selfishness, incivility or cruelty, and for a spirit of repentance when we have violated others' hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For forgiveness for all that we have done to harm the earth, for future generations, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the will to work for lasting care and sustainability for the planet, especially regarding the environment and weapons of mass destruction, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who need loving support at this time, and for those who hope we seek to enliven through our parish ministries, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick, especially the parishioners who have asked for our prayers. We ask the Lord Jesus to lay his healing hands upon them and assure them of his abiding presence at this difficult time, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Lena Sikonofi, John West, Jos Jose Joachim, Andrea Prieto, Reina, Odile Spedalera, Joseph Azotini, and Most Reverend Frederick Henry. Donald Langlois, and for their friends and family who grieve them with love. And at this Mass, we remember Murray Urquat, Frank DiStefano, Vitas, Vito Squatacek. We pray. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with the same hope. Fill the hearts of those waiting Christ coming long ago. Inspire us to keep hope alive for those who most need it. And we make this prayer through Christ, who is our sure and constant hope. Amen.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. See you. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Gerard our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember Murray Urquhart, Frank Di Stefano and Vito Squartechia whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Alfred and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those attending Mass online, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Both of you take this side here. Both of you take this side here. Ready the way. Stop. 
I invite the ministers bringing communion to the sick to please come forward. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray you bless these Eucharistic ministers as they bring the blessed sacrament to our sick and homebound parishioners. May those who receive the Eucharist from this sacred altar know that we are with them in spirit and in prayer. And we bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.
depth shall see, the depth shall 